As we already said, the ultimate goal of the monopolist is to maximize the profit. So let's have a look uh, at how profit can be maximized in monopolistic situation. Okay, uh, the first thing that we need to remember is marginal revenue must be equal to marginal cost. This is our uh, condition for profit maximization. Uh, so let's draw the graph. We've got quantity and price here, and the demand, demand in the most simplistic version, linear function of demand. Uh, now I'm going to draw the graph, pay attention to the order, because this is the order that also reflects uh, the order of your actions when you try to solve it, when you get a, a real life problem and you have to solve it, right? What you need certainly is demand. You need to get information about demand. If you know the demand, then uh, what you can do is you can find marginal revenue, right? So you can calculate marginal revenue from the demand curve. Uh, I can draw it here because I know the relation. I know they both start at the same point when demand intersects with the uh, vertical axis. This is the point where marginal revenue starts and it hits this horizontal axis in the middle, right? So it divides this distance made by demand into two equal parts. That's how we get marginal revenue. Then we need some information on total costs. And if we know total costs, then we are able to find average cost and we are able to find marginal cost. We can calculate average cost and marginal cost if we have information on total cost. Right? So these are two major things that you need to solve the problem of monopoly. You need to know the demand, you need to know the function of total costs, how costly it is to produce. Now that we have already calculated marginal revenue from the demand function, and we have calculated marginal cost and average cost from total cost curve, from total cost function, in fact, then we focus again on our condition for profit maximization, we are looking for the point of intersection between marginal cost and marginal revenue. Once you find this point, you get the idea of how much you should produce and supply to the market. QM is the monopolistic supply to the market. This is the quantity that you should produce and supply to the market. This quantity will make your profit as big as possible. But actually, you need to decide upon the price. You are the monopolist, you are the price maker. So the question is, how much would you charge? You need to sell the whole production. There is no um, point in producing more than you sell because you generate costs. By not selling, you don't generate revenue. So you should sell as much as it is produced. You should produce QM and you should sell this whole production at what price? Well, at the highest possible price. How do we know this highest possible price? We've got our demand function. So we know how much people would pay for a given quantity of goods. This given quantity of goods is now QM. So you put QM to your demand function and you get the price. This is your price. So you should produce QM of goods and sell them at PM price. That would make your total revenue. Your total revenue is PM times, times QM. This is your revenue. How about your costs? Well, your costs would actually be based on average cost. The average cost is the cost, the average cost of your production. So this is this vertical 
dimension, and now you multiply it by QM, because this is average cost times your production, and this uh, rectangle gives you the idea of total costs. Right, so you've got total revenues based on PMQM. You've got total costs based on average cost AC and QM. And the difference between them is the profit. The profit, which is actually this rectangle here, based on the difference between the price and average cost and based on how many goods you produce and sell. QM is the second dimension of, the, of this rectangle, right? So remember, for your profit maximization, you use this unit profit, this distance, this difference between P and AC, and you produce and sell QM, and this is, and this is how much you're going to earn. This is your maximum profit. QM, therefore, would be your economic optimum. QM is the production that offers you the highest possible profit. How about technological optimum? You know, technological optimum is here. You can see it with this red line. This is different. This is strange because Actually, your economic optimum is smaller than your technological optimum. Uh, consider our lecture on perfect competition market. You can see it's totally different from perfect competition market. In the perfect competition market, economic optimum was bigger than technological or in the long run perspective, this economic optimum could be equal to technological optimum. But in monopoly, it's different. In monopoly, you clearly should produce less than technological optimum. Why is that so? Why this bigger production of technological optimum is not good? Well, it's not good because Producing in technological optimum, you can save a little bit on costs. You can see that this red line is slightly below our average cost. So you can produce in a cheaper way, slightly cheaper way. But if you want to produce more, like for technological optimum, then when selling to the market, you need to decrease the price and you need to decrease your price in a very significant way. So you save some on the costs, but you lose a lot on the selling price. Hence, technological optimum is not what you want to have. This profit, this red rectangle, is smaller than maximum profit. Don't use it. We said that a single buyer has no influence on the decisions of the monopolistic business. So the question here now is, does monopolist care about price sensitivity of their customers? We are going to have a look at market supply of monopolist and price elasticity of demand. As you remember, price elasticity of demand tells us about sensitivity of customers to prices. So let's draw something, have a look at the graph. We've got our Q and P axis and our demand linear again and marginal revenue and marginal cost. And we know that for Profit maximization, our monopolist would try to equate those two, I mean marginal revenue and marginal cost. Therefore, the quantity appears here and the price. So this is the quantity produced by the monopolist and this is the price that is charged for those products. Look at the demand. 
as you remember, linear demand function has variable elasticity. This elasticity is very high up on the curve, is very low down on the curve, and in the middle, precisely in the middle, this elasticity is 1. So this is kind of a border that distinguishes between this is demand that is inelastic and this is demand that is elastic. Our conclusion here is the monopolist would always operate in the range of elastic demand where the customers are price sensitive. Why is that so? There are a few reasons. Imagine that our monopolist would like to violate our conclusion and would like to produce quite a lot. I mean, uh, would produce in this uh, area on the right side, right? where well, demand is inelastic. First of all, you would see that this production would be connected with negative marginal revenue. Meaning, if you increase your production in this range, on the right side, if you increase your production by one unit, you will have some additional costs. We find them in the marginal cost curve. So you have some additional costs, but your marginal revenue is negative, meaning selling this additional unit decreases your revenues. So you spend more on costs and you get less from selling goods. Would you like to continue that? No. If you are a reasonable manager, then you would try to decrease your production. And if you start decreasing this production when you are on the right side, when you start decreasing your production, you see two things. First of all, when you decrease your production, your marginal cost decreases. So that's good. And you can also see that your marginal revenue increases. It's negative, but it increases. I mean, this is a small number now. So when you decrease your production, it was too big. If you decrease your production, then you see your costs are smaller and your revenues are bigger. So if your costs are smaller and your revenues are bigger, then your profit, the difference between those two, will grow. It will grow very nicely because it grows because of cost decrease and it grows because of revenue increase. So it's just two lines going the other ways, right? up and down, and the distance is bigger and bigger. So you get a very significant incentive to decrease your production if you are on the right side. When you are not on the right side anymore, I mean, if you are going to the left, to the left, to the left, you hit this barrier of, of uh, unit elastic demand and you move on the left side where demand is already elastic, at least a little bit elastic. What now? Look at the graph. If you just exceed this border, you would see that still marginal cost is bigger than marginal revenue. When you exceed this line of unit elastic demand and you decrease your production, you keep on decreasing your production, you would see that your costs are smaller and now your revenues will also be smaller. But you know, if your costs go down that much and your revenue goes down only a little bit, then you are still better off. And this idea of your costs going very much down and your revenues going down just a little bit, this idea 
is true as long as MC is bigger than MR. So it allows you to keep on reducing your production as long as you reach the intersection point between marginal revenue and marginal cost. This is the point where you maximize your profit, right? So once more, look uh, at the slide that summarizes what I told you about the previous graph, right? It allows you to understand why monopolistic businesses would always try to lower their production, uh, to save on their costs, to supply relatively small quantities to the market because those small quantities allow them to charge a high price. And this is what monopolistic market is about.